Welcome back to Understanding Python. My name is Jake, and today I'm going to give what will likely be my most straightforward lesson in the series. I'll keep this one simple, as the more complicated uses are better covered with the feature they're used with. To start, I've created a new directory underneath understanding slash python called types. In there, I created a blank file called types.py. At the beginning, I'm just going to put a doc string. At the top, I'm just going to annotate what this file is going to cover. This is something you commonly see in a lot of libraries where they put uh, triple quote strings up at the top with a description of what the file contains. This is most commonly referred to as a doc string. Basically a way to put documentation into a script. It doesn't do anything, it's just there. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to cover today is Boolean values. These ones are pretty simple and you may be familiar with them already. Um, we're just going to call this one be true because we're going to set it equal to true. We'll call it the next one v false and set it to false. The only reason why I'm putting b underscore or v underscore is for b it just gives a little annotation of the type that it is. This isn't required. Um, I'm going to cover variable naming in the next video and v false just to make sure that you know that you don't need to put b in front of a variable. And to really solidify that case, let's just do this x none is equal to none. None isn't truly a boolean type, however it doesn't really fit into most of the other types that we'll be covering today, so I'm just going to put this up here just so you know it's an actual thing. The next one integers. So, as you may remember from school, integers are whole numbers. So these are 1, 2, 3, etc. And those could also be negative. So we'll start out with i1 or integer 1 is equal to 1, 2, 3. And then i2 will make this equal to negative 4, 5, 6. Simple enough. So what if you want to store non-whole numbers? Well for that Python also has floats. So floats is just a way to say decimal numbers. So f underscore 1 will be 3.14 and then we can also do f underscore 2 or float 2 it's equal to 0 0.00159265358897 was it 9323846 I may have messed that up but those are floats next up getting into types that have more utility will be strings so strings is a way to say basically text in Python and there's a couple of different ways you can annotate or store a string. So the first one that I'm going to give you is s single because strings in Python could use these single quotes. So this is a string. And you'll see around this we have single quotes. We can also do double, so s double is equal to this time with double quotes, this is also a string. So this is a little bit of a point of contention for Python developers or those in the Python community whether you should prefer strings with single quotes or double quotes. Um, depending who you ask you may get very strong opinions either way. In the end preference is up to you but if you do end up using a formatting tool like black it prefers double quotes and I'm getting swayed to that end as well. You can also specify strings with triple quotes like we did at the top. So we'll start with triple quotes and you guessed it 
I'm a string. And we'll close it off with triple quotes. This is in no way any different than the strings that are above. However, one thing you can do with triple quotes is more easily wrap lines of text. So we'll do a triple quote here. And this string can span multiple lines. Sure. Let's just go ahead and line these up a little bit better. There we go. So here we have the basic strings that you can use. We have single quotes, we have double quote strings, we have triple quote strings, and with triple, triple quote strings you can have triple quote strings that wrap multiple lines. So one reason that you might want to choose between these different types of strings is if you have different types of quotes in the center. So if you have this is a string with an additional apostrophe here, then you're going to escape that string and effectively start a new one there. All right, so the next thing that we're going to cover is lists. Basically, lists are a way to store sequences of objects in Python. So a simple list would look something like this. We're going to use the open and close brackets, and in between them, we're just going to type out 1, 2, comma, 3, comma, 4, comma, 5, comma, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then we're just going to wrap it off with 10. So this is a list from 1 to 10 with a comma in between each value. A comma is very important because it's what separates the values in a list. You can also store different types of data within the list. So let's create a list called L mixed. And in this list, we're going to put a 1. We're going to put a string version of 2. We're going to link to be true. We're also going to throw in i2, f1, s triple, and then just throw none in there for good measure. Another thing you'll commonly see or do is to make what are known as nested lists. So these are lists that have other lists or even other data structures underneath of them. So that would look something like this. Inside the outer brackets here and here, we'll just indent to make our nested list look better. So in here we'll do one, two, three. Put a comma because we're putting a new entry in there. And then we're going to do the string representations of one, two, and three. You can also just keep it at the same flat level. So you can put another one here, a two, and a three. If you want to keep consistent with your indentation, you can put these on different levels as well. But for this, I'm not going to worry about it. Next up are tuples. So you may not use these as much, but they do come in handy. You can think of tuples as basically the immutable version of a list or the unchanging version of a list. And what I mean by that is after you create a tuple, you can't add anything to it or remove anything to it as well as change the value of anything that's in that tuple. If you want to change the contents, you have to construct a new tuple based on the contents of the old one and what you want in the new one. For this one, we're going to use my ever creative values, one, two, three, and four. And what you'll notice difference between a tuple and a list is that while lists have the square brackets around them, tuples have the normal parentheses around them. Also, by default, Python will construct a tuple even if you do not put 
the parentheses around them. So in here, we can do 5, 6, 7, 8. And that will store T2 as a tuple. The final data type we're going to talk about today are dictionaries. So dictionaries are probably one of my favorite things or favorite data types within Python itself because they're extremely flexible in what you can do with them, especially with storing information. So a dictionary is basically just a key value mapping. Well, what do I mean by key value mapping? Well, let me construct a dictionary and I'll show you. So we'll have one colon two string of three colon two and then we're also going to map true to false just for the heck of it. So the key in this dictionary is one three and true and the values that they map to are two two and false respectively. Perhaps a better way to illustrate this is to break these down into individual lines. You may not always do these for short dictionaries, but for long dictionaries it's definitely a best practice. So now it's more clear that 1 maps to 2. The string of 3 also maps to a 2, and then true maps to false. Just like lists, you can mix different data types for your keys and values so you don't have to worry about keeping everything the same within a dictionary. So here we're going to map A to 7. We're going to map x none to x none. We're going to map s double to s double and then we're also going to map l mixed to l mixed so within these variables are stored the values that we defined above so x none maps to none s double is a string and lmixed is a list, as you can see by my tooltip here. Also like lists, you can nest dictionaries. So in here, we're going to have dsimple map to dsimple. We're going to have dmixed map to mixed, and they're also going to have nested mapped to a new dictionary that links L simple to L simple. So in this dictionary, we have a top level whose keys are D simple, D mixed and nested, where nested creates a brand new dictionary whose key L simple maps to L simple. Well that's all well and good, but what does this look like? Well, let's go ahead and save this file, and I'm going to use ipython-i to run this file interactively. If you haven't already installed IPython, I highly recommend it. This is one of the tools that does help me most in my experimentation throughout the years. I'm not going to give a full tutorial on IPython in this video, but if that's something that you would like to see, please leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to add it to my lesson plan. So with dash i loading types.py, what happened is that IPython ran everything in this file which is us setting all these values to all these variables and now we can access them on our line here so 
just simply in here, let's go ahead and look at S triple. Perfect. Even though it is a triple string, Python still sees it as a normal string. Now let's look at L mixed. Here you can see we have one, a string representation of two, true, negative 456, and so on. Getting into one or more complicated examples, we'll go to L nested. And here you can see we have an outer list here, which has two nested lists and then three more values that are in the outer list. Now if we look at D simple, we see we have a dictionary where we have our key value pairs of one being a key, false being a value, three being a key, and two being a value. If we take a look at D mixed, we can see that we have this top level A, X none, S double, and L mixed, where L mixed is of course referencing the L mixed list. Finally, let's take a look at our more complicated example in this file, D nested. Let's give us a couple of lines just so we can get a good look at it. So let's print out D nested. Here we go. So you can see the top level of D nested is D simple, D mixed, and D mixed has its own level in here. And then finally, we have nested down here, which created a new dictionary, L simple, with its own list down here. So since lists and dictionaries have a lot going on for them, I'll cover them more in depth in their own videos soon. However, for now, that wraps up this video. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions for topics you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment down below. To keep up with this series, please consider subscribing. And as always, thank you for watching.